Tita Lavinia of Tita's of Fashion Tree, and for this episode, I will be bringing you the ultimate gown review at the recently concluded Miss Grand International 2020. So please make sure you stick around, please subscribe to the channel, as well as hit that bell notification button for your weekly fashion fix. Guys, I hope that you're feeling a lot better this time because if you have been watching the pageant news lately, Sam has been making waves in Bangkok. They are in the middle of the media tour, so we get to see a lot of Sam interact not just with the girls but with media personalities and TV shows in Thailand. And you know, she really is a delight to watch. She's very comfortable. Um, her you know communication skills has really improved her confidence um she's really funny when she's on camera so so far so good for sam so i hope that you you know don't dwell in that darkness and just really be very happy for our girl because she will have a lot of opportunities in fact um miss grand international they're bringing the girls to phuket i think they partnered with the department of tourism so we will definitely see more of sam and her interaction so if you notice because it's so noticeable I dressed up for you because we will be talking about gowns this time. A lot of the vloggers out there have already said their piece about Miss Grand International and I didn't want to contribute to that anymore because I think we already had a lengthy live sesh together um, with me discussing my thoughts on Miss Grand International so I didn't want to go ahead and you know rehash that. And so the recently concluded Miss Grand International evening gown segment is one of my favorites to date because it really did not disappoint. Maybe because we are in the middle of the pandemic, a lot of us are really thirsty for sparkles, but I'm just glad that they gave it to us. No questions asked. I was not put on an intermittent diet for Swarovski crystals. So yeah, I was super duper pumped to see all of that sparkly things going on on stage. And I really liked that there were a lot of involvement by the Thai designers. And let me tell you why later on. So the first um, one who was called was actually Miss Argentina. Now, what I liked about Miss Argentina, her name, by the way, is Mariana Varela. What I liked about her was that I started warming up to her during the latter parts of the competition. I think she started getting her look and she started becoming, you know, a, a dangerous competitor towards the latter parts of the competition. So what she wore for the finals is a lemony yellow gown with a sweetheart neckline. It was a column gown that had a ruffle train detail by Colombian designer named Julio Gonzalez. Now, personally, this gown isn't my cup of tea, and I think that reflected in the scores that was flashed on screen. So the gown itself had a lot of details. Um, it had a lot of crystal details and a lot of you know, floral beading or yeah, floral beadwork. I thought that the details were just a little too sweet for someone as fierce and sassy as a Miss Argentina. And I also felt that the shade of yellow washed her out a bit because it was definitely different from the shade of yellow um, that the eventual winner um, wore. But had it been my choice, I would have stuck with her prelims gown. Now her prelims gown, the blue one was made by Venezuelan designer Nidal Nuayed. Now he also designed Stephanie Gutierrez's gown back in 2019 at Miss Universe. Since there was no shortage of sparkles at the evening gown segment, I was really happy when Miss Brazil's Lala Guedes came out because she came out in a gown that was sparkly, yes, but it had a bit of color in it. It was actually green. Now, according to what they posted, uh, the gown itself was made by Brazilian design house named Helcio Couture, and the green shade of the actual gown is a nod to the Brazilian flag. I mean, that's not very difficult to figure out, right? But more more than that, it also reflects the natural riches of Brazil. And if you notice, the intertwining of the branches really is a nod to Brazil's rich natural, um, you know, flora and fauna. And the details on her shoulders, um, they said that the waterfall crystals on the shoulders represent the rich waters of the country. So it all really made sense. Now, for me, it was a little too revealing. It was a little too vulgar for my taste, but that's fine again because. I Again, for Miss Grand International, um, a little bit of skin or maybe more skin is okay. And, you know, you have to hand it to Lala because her body is just crazy fit and amazing. So maybe if they can bring the gown, let's say, to Miss Universe, they could cover it up. But for Lala, that's fine because her body is sculpted to perfection. She can definitely showcase it 
any way she wants to. But if you ask me, this is a really successful gown on her part, but this is also a mashup between a Catriona Adarna gown, let me be honest, and Zozi Beanie's gown at Miss Universe. But nevertheless, I think, yeah, it's a very successful gown look. So, one of the prettiest faces this edition and one of the perceived threats was that of Czech Republic's Denise Svergerova. Now, Denise wore a beautifully intricate gown that was fully beaded in gold and crimson details. Now, the gown itself was made by Bangkok-based design house named GL Garlic Designs. These are also the same folks who did her prelims gown, which was originally owned by Coco Araya, one of the runners-up from 2018 or 2019. Please correct me. Now, um, the red gown from prelims was really very successful. It had impact, but she wore a different gown for the finals. I'm just not so sure if that was the plan all along. Let me tell you a little bit more about this gown. So the gown itself is a fully beaded gown on illusion French tulle. It's very, very complicated. The same way, you know, like these Thai designers complicate designs, but in a really cohesive fashion. So it's really very flashy. So she had the same arm detail details, the same shoulder and back details. So it's bejeweled. Um, it really is like wearing body jewelry. But if I had a little bit of a critique on her overall look, I would have really wanted her hair to be put up because I saw some footages of her practicing with the gown and I felt that that was a more successful look on stage because she has such a pretty face and her hair was just so thick in, you know, a very Hollywood type of Veronica Lake hair. I just felt that it swallowed most of her face i really would have wanted to see more of that pretty face in a really neat bun so next is guatemala's ivana bachelor who eventually won second runner up at miss grand international now she was also one of the ladies who changed her gown from prelims to finals now in prelims she wore a streamlined gown that was fully mirrored by sherry hill but then changed into a pink gown by one of the major sponsors of miss grand guatemala called blessings co now i checked a little bit on blessings i think this is a like an evening wear company in Guatemala, but the arrangement is very much like Cumbia and very Sherry Hill. So I think that her gown was custom made for her because when I browsed the website as well as their Instagram page, I did not find any indicator that this gown was previously worn or that this was part of a larger collection. So going back to the gown, this actually was not my cup of tea. Um, I'm not so sure why it was scored so high during the competition. I think they scored it because of the way that she carried it or maybe because of the overall impact of the gown on her. But the gown itself um, was not something that I would go for. First of all, there are two parts to the gown. The first part or the bodice part of the gown was fully beaded and it had a sweetheart neckline as well as the spaghetti straps. But the bottom part of the gown, which fans into a mermaid skirt, was made by fabrics that were bunched together which I felt had a very DIY feel to it and a very debutante feel to it. That's why um, I feel like this is way too sweet for Miss Grand International but of course it didn't matter because she ended up second runner-up anyway. But looking at the gown itself, um, yeah, I wasn't so like sold on the design aspect of it but I understand the impact because she looked like your classic Barbie. She had the blonde hair, she had that youthful pretty face and she was able to carry this gown design because she is super stashy. Aura Karishma did not change her gown for the finals. And why should she? She wore one of the prettiest gowns in pageantry, at least in recent years. In fact, this gown has elevated to one of my top three favorites of all time. And because of the impact that it created during the prelims, I absolutely have no clue how she would even top this off had she considered changing her gown for the finals. Now, let me tell you a little bit about this gown. Now, this gown, of course, is me the Aurora gown. Um, apparently, this was inspired by the Roman goddess of dawn, but I think they, it was inspired by the model herself because her name is Aura. So I think um, they drew inspiration from, you know, her name and, you know, what she represents. And I really like the re literal representation of the Aurora Borealis on that gown. So it was also a nude 
mesh gown that was fully beaded but what i liked about the direction of this gown was that the color is something very unusual it's fresh for the international stage and it is very risky of course when you wear colors like that in you know the hues of purple maybe some lilacs because most of the lighting on um, the international stage also has the same hue so that was very risky on her part but nevertheless it looked really really nice um I like that it looked really clean. I like that even from afar, you could really figure out the color. You could really figure out the design. And of course, she's a model. She's super statuesque. She definitely sold this gown. Now, I do have some of the critiques as well um, because I think that Aura, even if she was very successful in her wardrobe journey during the pre-pageant activities at Miss Grand International, I do have a little bit of an issue with the way she would do her hair. I feel that her hair has always been like too done or too big or too loud. I wish that she could have kept her hair uh, a lot simpler for the finals because we couldn't see the rest of the details like her beautiful jewelry she had celestial jewelry on which I, I felt could have been given more of a showcase so one of the more bizarre moments at Miss Grand International was the inclusion of Miss Malaysia's into the top 10 what happened was that uh, she won by the voting she won by uh people's choice so unfortunately some of the other girls from top 20 were elbowed so that she can come in um but you know that really doesn't matter at least on my end because i really liked her i really included her in my non-committal picks because i know that these malaysian girls they speak really well and you know she does have that sexy factor going on so when she was given the opportunity to take to the ramp and um, model her finals gown this was something that i have seen before because they made the photos available for public consumption very early on so her gown is a long sleeve gown um, in silver it's also embellished and it had a slit with a little bit of that um thigh uh, jewelry thing going on. I don't know how to describe it. I'm just going to flash the photo. This was designed by a Malaysian designer that also has uh, businesses in Jakarta as well as Saudi Arabia called Sposa by Rizki. And now we are with Miss Fotin, Samantha Bernardo. Now, Samantha wore two gowns that were entirely different. The first gown was a green gown that was a nod to a bird that was endemic in Palawan. And her final gown was by Yeye Pantaleon. And it was a nude gown that had chain crystals as well as pearls. Now, they called this gown the Samantha gown. And according to the description, it had everything that Samantha embodied. It had um, everything of uh, Samantha's dreams, her aspirations, um, what she has reached, what she has become. So the gown itself for me, I think, is very successful in terms of giving us gemstones, in terms of giving us sparkles, because this was exactly what I asked for. This was exactly what you guys asked for from team 20 days, and they were able to deliver. So the gown itself, I know garnered mixed reactions from a lot of you guys because although i like the design of the gown although i like the details of the gown i also understand that it did not exactly translate well on screen a lot of you guys felt that it washed her out a lot of you guys felt that because of the lighting but because of the set it didn't quite catch the details of the gown and i completely agree with you because i always say that when i do my reviews when a gown has to be explained to the greater public, it means that they have no idea or have no appreciation for it at face value. So this is something that you have to explain to them so that they would have an appreciation for it even more. So what I would love to do right now is to also give you some visuals on how intricate this gown was. Um, a lot of you also ask if this gown... Um, seems heavy because it does look a little heavy on screen i'm just not so sure because if you look at it it's actually just mesh with um like a string of beadwork that goes from the bodice and then it goes into the a curve for the hips and then another uh another set of like beading that's very linear this time so i understand why you would think it's heavy i'm not just so sure how heavy it is but of course samantha was able to carry that flawlessly and to make sure that you know she showcases the gown as if she has had practice in this gown for so long in 
Um, I like the fit of the prelims gown, but I like the design of the finals gown. Or maybe because I really like the details of the finals gown more. It's just that I also feel that the gown itself... Um, Maybe they could have just continued the linear pattern because breaking the pattern at the hip area gave it a little more weight. That's why a lot of you guys felt that it weighed her down. That's why a lot of you guys felt that um, it didn't quite mold her body. And because the the because it was so seamless, um, the undergarments also matched her skin tone. There wasn't like a contrast, so you really couldn't see the shape of the gown on her because everything just, you know, blended together for Samantha. But yeah, she worked that and she did really, really Miss well. This is Miss Thailand's Nam Chantrapadi. Now, her wardrobe choices, at least for prelims and finals, have always been on the quirky side, which really matches her personality because this is what she wants to do on stage to incorporate um, not just the design of the gown, but to also inject her comedic personality in her performance. Uh, the gown itself um, was made by Myriad Grand Mode. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't find any explanation on the make of this gown, so I'm just going to base it on my observation. So the gown is gold. It is intricate as well it is fully beaded but the details are more pronounced because they don't they didn't just use beads to um, showcase the design of the actual gown but they also used other techniques that of course the ties are well known so the gown um, had long sleeves it was a column gown with a really low neckline and what was interesting about the gown was that it had details on the sleeves that looked like starbursts when you know when she moves around the stage so i wish i could have gotten more information on what um the patterns um are inspired by or what the patterns mean but i think that she looked really pretty with her overall hair and makeup for the uh, evening gown so next we have puerto rico's fabiola valentine now fabiola also wore a tie designer just like miss czech republic now the gown the beautifully bejeweled gown that looked like the lava gown with um that ombre black and red uh train at the back was made by Sivalai Ladprau. Now, Sivalai Ladprau is also um, a fashion account that we follow at Titas of Pageantry, so we're very familiar with their work. I'm not so sure of his gender or her gender, so I'm just going to use their. Um, yeah, we're, we're very familiar with their work. We're very familiar with um, how they you know, would create these gowns for, you know, pageant girls. And in fact, the gown that Fabiola wore was also uh, showcased at Miss Tiffany. That's why I was actually very familiar with this gown because I have seen this gown before. Now, that's fine with me because if you have these beautiful works of art, um, I wouldn't mind, you know, wearing these gowns on other platforms or other competitions because it would be a waste to just wear them once. So yeah, she did wear this gown. I'm not sure what the arrangement was um, because she had a white gown during prelims and then she moved into this beautifully bejeweled gown um, that was crystallized, but it also had red accent details and of course that train that you know made it even more dramatic. Um, I like the gown. I just also feel that because it wasn't made for her, um, because it wasn't measured um, for her body that it looked bigger. Because in some of the photos that you will see, whenever she would turn or whenever she would have like a curve on her um, between her waist and her hips, so you could see a little bit of that mesh fabric bunching up, meaning to say that the mesh isn't an exact fit to the contours of her body. And yeah, it makes sense because when I pulled the photo from Miss Tiffany, the same gown was also worn by uh, someone taller, someone um, with a, a totally different body type. But I liked how she was able to move in the gown. I like her hair and makeup as well. I just noted that the gown, even if it was just fabulous on its own, is just a teensy bit short for the statuesque Fabiola. Of course, uh, we have Miss Grand International herself, Abina Apia of USA. Now, she had such a smart move in deciding to wear a canary yellow gown. Now, it's really interesting for me because I save a lot of photos um, so that when I edit these videos, I won't have to save them again. But I particularly saved this photo of Miss Mexico, Andrea Meza. Um, this was the same photo of her when she had her passerella video. She wore a canary yellow dress, which was really uh, of a solid fabric. But 
it was a sweetheart neckline that was really low cut and uh, the shape of the skirt or the shape of the hem is you know pretty similar to that of Abina. So when I was doing my research for this piece, I found out that the uh, designer that I had in mind was also the same designer who actually made Abina's gown. Now the designer is Israel Garrido. He is Mexican, and this made me think that Abina is a thinking candidate. Um, she did not just go to Miss Grand International. Um like what I initially thought she would do, like she would just do her paandars and, you know, she would just, um, you know, be her quirky self. But she is a thinking candidate because in all her years of pageantry, I felt that she gathered all her contacts and all her networks and pulled like the best talents that could help her in her last journey as a pageant girl. And this is exactly what she did because for a Miss USA to tap the talents of a Thai designer, a Filipino designer, or a Filipino trainer, and then wear a Mexican designer for the finals, it means that she really pulled all the strings and got all of her cards using all of her networks all over the world. So going back to the gown itself, I think that this is a really pretty gown. It was a very flattering uh, silhouette for her. I also like the uh, idea that it was lace because not a lot of the ladies wore lace, but it made it more of a pageant gown even if it was lace because they added more uh, details to the fabric itself. Now, if there was just this one thing that I would have removed from the gown itself because it competed with everything else she had a necklace she had a bracelet i would have removed those really big uh gemstones or those rhinestones that were attached to, to wrap this one up i would love to give a shout out to miss mexico's angela uriar because she eventually won the best in evening gown award which is actually kind of weird because she did not get to showcase her evening gown as she only advanced to top 20 but angela won for her beautiful ensemble back at prelims, it was a pink Barbie look that was tied together by a pair of really beautiful bejeweled shoes by Christian Divat. But the gown itself was made by Nohei Soto. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. It's very detailed. I had so much fun gathering all these photos, these HD photos, just to give you the details of what these gowns or what these works of art um, are really like. Uh, so there. And I will see you very soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.